So here everybody is talking about their uh, COVID life, so to speak, and you know the changes that they have gone through. Also, post the lockdown, the overwhelming experience of going out in public all over again because you were in a space which which was protected, but you found yourself. I think all all of you, all of us actually, have gone through that experience of finding ourselves all over again and then going out. Oh my God! Now to normalize this is becoming a problem. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, so absolutely true. It's also so important for us to understand the trigger. Why did that happen? For the first time in our lives, we were forced to go in on the inside. Mm. You were not allowed outside. We've never felt that loss of control. Right. Now, what happens when you go in on the inside? Three questions were asked by every human being: Who am I? What do I do? Mm. And what is my worth? Mm. That's why. Life changes happened, career shifts happened, growth happened, and yes, whilst a lot of loss has happened and a lot of grief has happened, there has been a lot of growth. Yeah, mental health got main stage recognition mm. in the last two years. Today, I have the highest of highest corporate calling in saying, "Hey." We need you. We need you. Come on our board. We need this. We need that. And I was like, Are you all joking? Were we sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> it is the largest and epidemic that has existed, which yeah. is mental health, since the time the world, you know, started. Since the time our world was formed. So Annie, I feel because we all were forced to go in on the inside, there was loss of control. We were hit by something known as uncertainty. Yeah. Now, what does uncertainty cause? When we don't know how tomorrow is going to look like, when whether we can take on the projects, I don't know how I'm supposed to be. Mm. Am I supposed to be? Will these are these people my friends? Are yeah. they liking me for a reason? Yeah. You know, how am I supposed to think of my self-image? All of these things um, started, and I feel that is that had to happen. No, right. That had mm. to happen. The most beautiful part is that a lot of people started reaching out for help. Yeah. They did start reaching out for help. They understood that therapy is a real thing. They wanted to talk because they didn't find the answers around them. So they started wanting to find the answers from within them, and that has been um, wonderful, quite honestly. Although talking about statistics, what this did for our generation of our youth, it induced a lot of fear. We mm. were a fearless generation, and, and, and generally you are right, but it induced so much fear that we saw. Um, the level of anxieties rise, mm. depression rise, self-image becoming very conflicting. You are different on how you looked on Zoom. Now all of a sudden you have to face mm. face yeah. your office. People have joined careers, joined offices, joined college, all joined online. everything. Mm. You know, online. Who am I? What do I do? And what is my worth? Mm. You know, this also brings me to the uh, to the other reality, which is a more extreme reality, which is death. We've all faced it. Um, we've lost our loved ones in this past two years. So I think uh, in that, uh, has it been difficult for you to, in the midst of all this, while you're growing on one hand, there is also this reality that is kind of happening on the side. It's it's like a daily thing. You hear stories of losses of lives and stuff like that. So how did you deal with that? What did you tell yourself? All of us know that when we talk about our flourishing in that situation, we're also very aware of the fact that 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 was a terrible time for sure. all of all like all of this world, and people experienced losses that like the statistics of death were yeah. like just every day when you checked it, and then you were sitting in your AC room with all of that privilege overflowing, and you're just reading about it, and you feel helpless in a very Uh, white guilt sort of way, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I mean, how do you even deal? Like, why should you even talk about that guilt? Yes. Because yes. Do you need to take up more space than you already are taking up? Like, is my voice of guilt even something that I should be speaking about? Mm. You're just internally feeling mm. like, oh, on one hand, I'm like really growing here, but on the other, the entire world is like literally, Suffering. yeah. So that was a thought, definitely. But how do you even speak about it without feeling guilty about it? Absolutely, and you know, Annie, adding to that, um, what we were experiencing technically as an entire world, not country, yeah. the world was mm. collective grief mm. and survivors' guilt at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And that is something that a lot of us did not yeah. know how to cope with or deal with because I'm hearing about. 
death every second second i'm letting that impact me energies are real they are tran- they transform right. and they transfer also how much ever you like it or not right so um i think um everybody but another thing the whole country stood for each other the right. whole world stood for each other mm. so uh, while we did have to go through tremendous amount of loss and grief i really really hope that um, through organizations like ours and a lot of things that everybody came to do together there is hope and there is light at the end of this tunnel yeah. i i definitely think um, one thing that really came out of especially related to death what you're speaking about i think the entire world or especially people in general had to were kind of forced to come together to kind right. of you know right. support one and another and face mortality and just yeah. Yeah. also and just to face it together yeah. you know because uh, otherwise it's like uh, hospitals for example are the main place if you're around that you hear of a casualty or you hear of a death but after the covid time i remember people in the middle were posting all over instagram when they needed oxygen yeah. cylinders yeah. Yeah. they needed covid beds for example Everyone ventilators they were stop posting content at suppose yeah, exactly. yes. it was exactly. just covid Absolutely. it was yeah. it was yeah. it was almost like a uncalled or unsaid content yeah. strike kind of a thing yeah yeah right. when we have a platform use it yeah, so exactly it. exactly and if you're not then just just shut just up shut like, yeah. yes, people stop. people i have like seen actually hate each other a coming together to save a life yeah right you know that realization that came was only because of covid and i think it normalized death also as a conversation right. as i was saying otherwise you only hear about death around hospitals right uh, you know if you work or are around a hospital you hear okay that's the normal place but after covid it it started like okay it happened in the building right next to mine yeah yeah so it is real it, it can happen to me also Any yeah. person you asked at the time, they knew someone who passed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Was, so in the second yeah. wave, I think it be, it came it, very <coughs> close to home. Yeah. It was really, really Too close. close. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think it kind of changed. Uh, while it did overwhelm us, it also did kind of, uh, you know, slow us down for a good, for a very good reason. Yeah. And be able to accept it collectively, which is a very good thing. Right, mm-hmm. Anushree? Yeah. One World, your station. One World.